1957, the Atomic Energy Commission, or AEC, the precursor to the Department of Energy, said it had created a sub-kiloton warhead. While most nuclear warheads were getting bigger and bigger, eventually reaching over 3,000 times the blast from the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima, a new weapon was emerging. This weapon was designed to be the last option on the battlefield, but the first option in nuclear war. This warhead that the AEC was talking about led to an entirely new method of deploying nuclear weapons, the battlefield nukes. This led to the development of some very unique weapons such as the M65 atomic cannon or the Mark 45 nuclear torpedo. These were designed to be used by the personnel on the ground at the volition of the commander against other military targets. A great example of a use case was Russia at the time had 23,000 tanks that could cross the border and enter into Europe at any time during the Cold War. But to say that using these weapons were problematic was an understatement. What's to separate them from a strategic nuclear warhead, using it against a city and killing a lot of population? Or from the enemy launching their own battlefield nuclear warhead, which would cause the slow exhalation into all-out nuclear exchange? These might have been the perfect solution to a short-term problem on the battlefield when the enemy forces are at your doorstep, but this really wasn't a viable long-term solution for the survival of the human race. For the United States, these battlefield weapons culminated into the smallest nuclear warhead, the W-54 a weapon that was capable of delivering up to one kiloton of TNT. To put it in perspective, that was 1 15th the yield for the bomb drop in Hiroshima. However, it was only 0.72% the size of the bomb. Instead of being 10 feet long and 28 inches across, it was only 16 inches long and 11 inches across. It only weighed 51 pounds. But in the Davy Crockett rifle, it had the destructive force of 20 tons. To put it in perspective, 20 tons of TNT is around the maximum load for a semi-truck. In the space of 388 cubic feet, or about the size of a one-bedroom moving truck. And all of this power was placed in the hands of a five-man crew that launched it from a rifle. Given the power that this weapon gives, why wasn't it deployed or used? Wouldn't it have been easier to deploy a few dozen of these Davy Crockett's instead of an entire division? Well, yes, naturally, if the battlefield was a vacuum. The problem with small nukes is, the more that's deployed, the more likely you are to use it. But once you do use it, there's nothing to stop that full escalation to nuclear war. As you're deploying more and more of these weapons, the enemy will deploy more and more of their own. This will cause that escalation and only one short fuse will cause all of these from going off. But even with this knowledge, around 400 of the W-54 warheads were made and deployed as air-to-air -air missiles, artillery pieces, or even these nuclear rifles. There was one more use for the W-54, and that's the B-54, or the U.S. suitcase nuke. While it really wouldn't fit inside of a suitcase, it would fit inside of a backpack. It weighed about 58 and a half pounds for the Mod Zero, or 70 pounds for the Mod 1. It's a cylinder that's about 12 inches in diameter and 18 inches long, with everything. It was also called the SADM, or the Special Atomics Demolition Munition. This weapon had the ability to destroy bridges, dams, or it could be even left inside of cities. It could be left underwater or airdropped with special forces personnel. The estimated yield for this weapon was anywhere between 10 and 1,000 tons of TNT. So I just want you to imagine for a second. You're going to strap on your back the equivalent of 10 fully loaded train cars of TNT, and you're going to parachute with it land in the water, attach it to a dam, then try to run away from it. Because of this, there's many allegations that this mission would be a one-way mission. 
a suicide mission because it would be really hard to outrun this weapon's timer and somebody probably would need to defend it. But given its small size, the ability to conceal and camouflage it, there would be a really good chance that you'd be able to just drop it there and then remotely detonate it from a safe distance. But is the W-54 the smallest possible nuke? We've explored it in great detail with its yield and its uses, but in the next episode, we're going to calculate what is the smallest theoretical nuclear bomb we can make, or as it's scientifically called, the smallest prompt critical mass from plutonium and uranium, and see what it would take to make a sub-50 pound nuke for a squad last option available.